Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. All right, guys, welcome back. I am joined with uh, a tremendous guest here and Miss Ina Lukanovsky. Uh, Ina, welcome to the program. Uh, nice to see you. We're doing uh, not, not the radio this time. We're, we're on uh, Zoom, so you guys can, uh, can, can see uh, the guest right here. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm Great glad morning. that you're here. Thank you. Um, so you're the founder of uh, Real Health Solutions. Can you give the audience just a kind of a refresher in case they never uh, saw the show before um, what, what that's about and what you do? Absolutely. I, I found my practice um, of when I was originally sick. And I, uh, I was a pharmacist at the time, knowing only traditional medicine. I uh, made my practice to suit my needs at the time, which I needed more than just traditional medicine. I learned functional medicine to help myself. And that's the, that was the beginning of the practice. Um, I focus on helping people reset their digestion, balance their hormones, reduce inflammatory symptoms, get more energy, restore immune system, all with help of functional medicine and other integrative methods. Uh, you know, can you, can you kind of tell me what functional medicine is? Absolutely. Functional medicine is um, all about getting to the root cause of uh, any kind of condition, illness, or diagnosis. We want to see whether it was one or more. Very often, it's more than one root cause. Could be a genetic predisposition that was triggered by something else. It could be a parasite or or mold uh, toxicity. It could be uh, all of all of them combined. We see that root causes for many people, even uh, emotionally uh, originated. Uh, it, it's all about getting to understand the root cause and looking at other aspects, not just this particular, uh, for example, Crohn's or colitis, right? It's not just the gut. We look at people emotional and environmental health and uh, their lifestyle and other aspects not just one thing it's a body as a whole i see i see now um you mentioned the gut uh I've, I've heard that so many uh things that go wrong start in the gut is that is that true i know you look at everything but a lot of it does it is that real important oh i'm really big on that i believe everything <laughs> that's totally me i believe uh -huh. everything starts in the gut okay. oh my immune, immune system uh, depends on uh, everything related to the gut. So obviously that's how you're going to deal with infections and viruses in today's environment. So it all roots in the gut. Even uh, things like um, depression that we thought of before that, for example, serotonin, the hormone of um, happy or not happy, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. it, most of it is made in the gut. And we used to think that it was made in the brain. So yeah, we, we really want to track everything and root everything to the gut. Wow. So that's really, that's made in the gut. It's not made in, in, in the brain. I, I didn't know that. 5-HTP mostly is made in the gut. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. So now, now tell people um, you do one-on-ones, right? Uh, but okay. you also, you also tell me about the programs you've got going on. Okay. I have the first uh, program for the year uh, going on in February. I only do two big programs, uh, two big workshops a year in person. And they're all also going to be streamed on Zoom. Uh, and I do have uh, small little groups where I actually teach people and train them. Uh, most of the people that uh, sign up for these kind of groups, uh, they're whether helping or caring for someone with this chronic illness that are literally debilitated and they need to feed them and get them the best kind of nutrition or parents of uh, younger um, children. So they want to learn and obviously it benefits the entire family. A lot of my clients are families now. They started with one and mm -hmm. it's mom, dad, uh, and two, three kids, two, three boys, two, three girls, uh -huh. the entire family um, benefits from 
nutritional change and lifestyle change and all little aspects that the mom, for example, <clears throat> would change in the home or detoxing the home. That's also part of my program, learning uh, to clean up the home in a bright way. All these toxic products out there still, still with everything we know and everything we learn about the environment, we still have so much junk <laughs> in the products and the air and the water mm -hmm. unfortunately unfortunately yeah well you mentioned uh, nutrition do you get into every aspect of it do you teach people who don't really know how does how does the nutrition part work into your program yeah very good question i um i believe that it should be really um individualized I really believe that people need to enjoy what they're eating in order for any kind of program to be successful. If you're going to give someone a cookie cutter uh, menu, uh, they will probably follow for a period of time. Some will follow it for longer, depending on the personality, right? Mm. There are people that really stick, try to stick to things. But if they hate it, if it doesn't really align with them, um, there's only so much this, this menu will do for them, even if it's the cleanest and the healthiest. Mm -hmm. I believe in um, individualizing it to the point where, what do you enjoy today? What do you enjoy eating? If you're enjoying dairy, if you're enjoying that cheese, and you really shouldn't and you couldn't, and, and let's switch that. What can you swap it for? Let's change it to something that is totally suitable you're enjoying it yet it will not inflame you mm -hmm. so that's what i truly believe in it's it's definitely not a simple menu that you're gonna upload with anyone on the <laughs> i understand and what about supplements uh, are you a proponent of taking supplements uh, protein shakes and stuff like that do you get into any of that Absolutely. Yes. Cool. Tell uh, me about it. Not, not all supplements are the same, even if it's um, a great supplement that has a great active ingredient, depending on the brand, you could get additional uh, additives and even harmful ingredients in the same wonderful product that will be probably made by a less expensive brand or just some the, the fillers in there, you have to be careful. So there are beautiful, wonderful, working, effective supplements, nutraceuticals that are uh, very helpful if you pick the right one for your needs. Uh, for example, after doing functional diagnostics and you know that you're depleted of something, let's say magnesium and iron, and you're getting that supplementation. Uh, but if you're buying a, a brand that's not so amazing and adds, yeah. adds things there um there's sometimes more harm than good mm -hmm. so you have to be careful so yes it's about pay, choosing the right supplement it's about uh getting it recommended by a your know, doctor or healthcare practitioner whoever is experienced and and um knows what they're doing and also buying the right brand mm -hmm. yeah important. yeah like I, I saw this study uh where they they really uh don't um, keep track of what they're putting them. You could put in, uh, this guy was making like a protein or a creatine supplement or something like that. And it was just labeled as creatine, but nobody checked it. So you didn't really know what you were getting. Uh, does that happen a lot? It does. We unfortunately find products on the market that don't find, don't fill the standards. Uh, there's none of, not a lot of them are being tested. The clinical, um, aspect of uh of those <laughs> it, it's interesting uh, to bring this up industry is huge a lot of money made uh -huh. uh, all i'm gonna say right now is <laughs> i highly recommend um professional brands i yeah. highly recommend um active ingredient to be there and not much else in inactive ingredients and uh, companies that are proven uh, to test and retest their products. I see. And, uh, and you have a bunch of uh, instant feedback that's come in, but before I get there, uh, do you focus on exercise at all? Does that work into uh, the one-on-one, -on -one, the program that you work with? It's important, but I do, I do have a lot of really, really um, sick 
people coming in with Crohn's and colitis and oh. ex- exercise for them is really over exhausting and dealing with adrenal system that uh, is like really on the ground. We can't over exercise walking even is their exercise moving a little bit is important, but depending on e- each individual person, some people need a lot of exercise. Yeah, no yeah. question there. Mm-hmm. So definitely uh, it's part of it. It's just how much of it and what kind of exercise and oh, something that that's too much with adrenal um, oh, not existing, not existing there. You, mm-hmm. you really could harm someone with yeah. over exercise. So everybody's different. Yeah, I get it. Uh, so, so you got a bunch of people that uh, have written in, Mr. Producer. You, you got uh, uh, some questions right now. Yes, um, Darnell from Louisiana. They wrote in asking if integrative health practices, such as your own, increase life expectancy. Oh, that's a oh, beautiful question. <laughs> if, you, if you currently find a study like that, I'll I'll be super grateful. <laughs> well, we, we don't get we don't get to see a lot of studies um, on integrative and that definitely not not as much compared to pharmaceutical industry. Um, good quality studies need to be uh, supported financially with, with really nice um, amounts. So um, we do get some that are smaller and, and more quality studies that are decent and uh, we could base our information on them, but not, not that information yet. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, th- well thank you uh, for, for, for writing in my friend. Um, before I get to the, to the second one, I, I wanted to ask you, uh, I understand that you knew that you were going to be taking care of people uh, from your grandmother, who I understand had uh, some health issues, uh, complication yeah. issues uh, can, can you tell me about that because that kind of got you where you were going right uh, yeah i was just talking about it a few days ago mm-hmm. i my one of my first magazines which was in russian then <laughs> i was uh-huh. like literally four or five was health uh-huh. magazine that's that's the concentration um in my, of my childhood mm-hmm. uh, she was she was sick and i was around a lot and i always wanted to help and she had uh, digestive issues. And uh, from very, very young age, I knew that I was going to be in that field. Um, helping people with digestive problems did not think for a second while I was a kid that this would become my problem too in my 30s, so bad and so fast. But, you know, we're meant to do things and we're giving these clues even when we're young. Yeah. Gotcha. So, so you developed some, some problems, uh, and, um, were you working at the pharmacy at that point when you, yeah. when you get, okay. And, yes. and, and, and is, is that, um, did that kind of push you forward since you were able to help yourself? Now you're going to help other people. Is that kind of how it went? Exactly. My first website that I wrote, uh, was pure, um, just out of the goodness of my heart to share with people mm-hmm. what I went through. It was called Journey with Crohn's Disease. It, I, I took it down a few years ago, so couldn't maintain it anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but my first clients came from there. It was it was something that just meant to happen mm-hmm. without even me realizing it. I wrote up the website with things that helped me. Uh, people asked me for help. I started coaching and it took it from <laughs> the practice started from that. Okay, cool. Mr. Producer, he's got some uh, some other questions from people writing in. Yes, we have Maddie from North Carolina, and they go, um, well, they wrote in, what do you enjoy most about helping people? <laughs> it's the feedback. It's the feeling. <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. the, it's that call. It's um, seeing that improvement and uh, all the referrals and uh, it, it's it's tremendous. It's I, I can't imagine doing anything else. It's <laughs> just so fulfilling. And how do people get a hold of you? Uh, ideally, it's my website or the phone number. So the website is digestivereset.com. You could schedule from there. You could upload my books for free uh, from the site. Or my phone number is 732-414-6223. That's right. You're a best-selling author too. Yes. Two books. Two books. Can you tell us about them? Sure. 
my um, the first book is, was again about Crohn's and colitis and my journey and what helps and, uh, and a little information on nutraceutical. I go into protocols that are known to work in the functional medicine world, integrated world and nutraceutical world. Uh, again, those are more of a general recommendation. You, I'm, I'm all about individual, but at least start there. And I've had a lot of feedback from the books too. Even though it's very general, it helped so many people. So that was very satisfying as well. And then the second book I wrote as a follow-up just to, to um, expand a little bit on the connection between digestive system and the hormones, because not a lot of people understanding that concept. The connection between hormones and digestive healing is straightforward. Like if your cortisol is not produced, if your inflammation is there, how could you expect the digestion to, to the digestive inflammation to come down? Gotcha. So the second book was all about that, just to bring up the, to, to get you to understand that concept, uh, you need to balance both. Okay, great. Mr. Producer, you, uh, you have some more instant feedback for us. Yes. Um, we have Phyllis from Washington. Um, they wrote in, is milk as dangerous as many, out oh, sorry, is milk as dangerous as many health outlets make it out to be? Hmm. All right. I'm opinionated there. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. That's great. I don't want to hurt any industries that produce milk. <laughs> my opinion. So I'll say this. <laughs> I'm going to try to be a politician right now. <laughs> I, um, I don't drink milk. I don't allow milk in my house. Mm. I don't recommend milk to any of my clients. Wow. I uh, no, no dairy products for None? my clients as well. No yogurt? Zero. Zero. Wow. Yogurt, yogurt's common, beautiful shape, different forms right now. Coconut, almond, cashew. Um, you could buy starter kits to make yogurts if you really wanted to from any kind of nut milk from hemp. Oh, we have so many options right now. If you have an inflammation uh, and you can't get rid of it, start there. Get rid of milk. Wow. Well, Again, that's my opinion only. No, hey, hey, I mean, who who else would know better? I mean, you you've been through this and you help people. Um, I heard. Uh, I don't know if this means anything, but maybe this is an urban legend or something. But I heard that we're the only uh, species that drinks another species' milk. I mean, yeah. uh, is that true? Um. Uh, yes, and for no. the most part. Um, it's, 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 it's an, uh, it's, it's a myth. We, uh -huh. um, the, re, there was a really uh, good reason to drink milk for many years at, at the time of our uh, evolvement evolution. We needed that at the time as a source of nutrition. Uh, we are pretty, it seems like we're pretty much done. And I, I really think that eventually it's not going to really? happen anymore. What are what are some of the uh, the um, the negative effects of of milk in your opinion? Well, major one is uh, major inflammation when you drink it, and it's not just even digestive inflammation. We we get we, we could get all the way to cardiovascular inflammation of the yeah of the vessels. Um, milk is an irritant. A lot of people are intolerant to the pro to the protein of milk as well as their sensitive meaning like inflammation from it from milk so it's two reactions going on you could actually be intolerant to a food but not sensitive or you could be sensitive and not intolerant to milk we get both reactions you don't digest it plus you are actually having an allergic type of reaction in the gut without feeling anything that is the worst kind because it's the chronic silent inflammation you don't feel it you don't know it but something inside of your gut is like almost a sandpaper on your intestinal lining wow i'm glad that person uh, wrote in with a question this is this is kind of important so um are you uh someone who who thinks that uh, we should be taking calcium supplements how do we get calcium other than milk i just don't know so 
Yes, <laughs> greens. Many greens will do that. Really? You can get calcium yes. from greens? You can. Absolutely. If you're having a decent digestion, if you're absorbing your nutrients, majority of us will get plenty of calcium from the diet. If you're getting enough magnesium and if you're getting enough vitamin D between all three, you're going to be fine. But the key is again, to improve and optimize your digestive process. So you could assimilate or you could absorb the nutrients. That's the key. Because if you're taking even supplement of a calcium and you're not absorbing and getting in that nutrient, it's, it's even worse from the supplement than from the food. You're actually absorbing better from your meals than wow. from supplementation. So should you take calcium? Not unless we've tested your micronutrients and we know for a fact that your most people are not depleted. Uh, if you're optimizing your magnesium intake and vitamin D, most of the time, calcium in the diet is enough. I, I see. And uh, how, how about uh, eggs? When you say um, no dairy, uh, do, you, do you think eggs are good or uh, do we eggs stay away great. from eggs are great? Eggs are great. So again, oh, it's, we're all about pasture and organic eggs, free, free range, roaming. Um, you want to get more expensive brands. Like I, I hate to say it, but unfortunately that's what it is today. Yeah. Um, but yeah, eggs are good for most people. Again, unless they test for food sensitivities and show up with the sensitivity to separately egg yolk or separately egg white or both, uh, then it's a great food. You, you get a lot of choline. You're not going to get a lot of choline from many other foods and choline is very important in the egg yolk. Um, so I'm all for eggs. Yeah. Okay. And you said uh, before about uh, checking everyone's levels and stuff. So when you first get a new client, how do you test all those, uh, those different things? Is that through blood? Um, how, how do you know wh where the levels are to start with? That's a beautiful question. Uh, functional diagnostics, they range from anything from a urine test to stool test to blood spot to real blood work with the physician. Um, all depends on the needs of a client. All depends on their wellness goals and how urgent. Uh, a lot of times stool testing is extremely important to see if there's parasitic infection. Uh, or other infections that are urgent for digestive clients. Uh, for micronutrients, different labs that offer different options, but the newer really great labs, they order blood spot, which people at the privacy of their home, they do a prick themselves, yeah. blot it on the paper and uh, about 10 cards and, and you're good to, to know majority, like most common foods. So I that's see. really, really great. We've, we've came a long way with functional diagnostics. Nice. It's a really cool thing. Okay. And now, is it common in this, in this country uh, for people to have parasites? And uh, is, that a, is that a big thing that, uh, that can really affect people? Or people might not even know that they have that. Is, does that ever happen? Um, again, in order to say at a such statement, if it's common in this country, we need to have more data. I'm going to tell you what I've seen over my clinical practice for over 10 years. It happens a lot. It happens a lot. We, we often, um, especially when we travel to like more exotic places and um, that are not even close by, to, <laughs> close to us. Yeah, yeah. Come back with the parasite. We see people with the E. coli infection that becomes chronic. That wasn't noticed, for example, by they chuck it to food poisoning. Food poisoning should go away on its own. But if it's if it didn't and that E. coli becomes a chronic silent infection, it always stays in the system, hasn't been treated. People get sick over over time. So we really need to do a really good extensive stool test for these type of people. But sure. parasites, parasites are quite common. Yeah. Wow. OK. Um, hey, Mr. Producer, you have uh, one more. We have time for one more. Yes, we have time for one more. Okay. We have. Uh, Phineas from Arizona, they wrote in, um, is there a difference between drinking a protein shake versus actual eating? Like would drinking or eating a substance change the way it's absorbed into the body? A very good question as well. 
Uh, depends on the shake. Depends on how well you're going to absorb. Depends if it's shake pure amino acids or actual protein shake. Depends on other ingredients in the shake. Uh, if things are decent, like general blanket statement, if things are decent with your gut, uh, the best way to absorb anything is through food. You want to eat the food. That, that's ideal. That's where we want to be. We never want to resort to and go for anything else but food. But, but unfortunately today, so many people, so many problems with digestion. So, and, and so many people really need that extra protein to heal, to heal the lining, to heal adrenals, to, to um, just, they, they're lacking protein. So good quality protein shakes are amazing. Very important, especially in the elderly population. We see a lot of, a lot of low um, albumin in, in elderly population, which that comes from that eggs, right? Eggs, a great source of protein. The That's albumin, good. Uh, uh, albumin, no, not from eggs. But, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> albumin is a, is a level on, on blood work. I see. Uh, so yes, it's, it's important to do those if you need it. Uh, and uh, if there is no other choice and good quality brand. And sometimes when you have absorption problem, you could go straight to pure amino acid shake, which is even easier to get that amino acid uh, into the system without having to deal with absor dealing, absorbing that hard to digest protein from the shake. That's even okay. easier. All right. Hey, Ina, um, we're at the end of our, our show here. Thank you so much. Um, anything you want to leave us with? And then one more time, uh, tell people how to get a hold of you, please. Very uh, great yeah. information. Thank you. Sure. It's digestivereset.com is my website. Um, sign up for newsletters. I, I update with my programs and courses and, and sometimes specials. My phone number is 732-414-6223. Uh, for one-on-one, -on -one, you could schedule directly from the website um, and, and we take it from there. I'll follow up with the email and um, I'm always coming up with new courses, new classes, new information. Uh, just keep up with the website. And All right. Ina, yeah, thank you so much. And we'll be right back, guys. Thank you. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.